Do you remember the famous, or may I say infamous clip of Michael Todd that made its rounds all over the internet about a year ago? You know the clip. God decided male and female. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know. I'm not the king. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that and I don't know what to do to help you but to stand with you and pray with you and not, and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title, Transformation, you can be here. Oh God, I want you here. I think most Christians got this whole thing backwards. Let me explain. About a year ago, evangelical pastors and influencers were outraged at Michael Todd. Many pastors could not believe how lenient Michael Todd was about this whole thing. But what most Christians missed was that Michael Todd, through his passing comments, was demonstrating and revealing so much more about his theology and what he actually believes about the inclusion of LGBTQ+, the more people were able to grasp. Now, before I explain what was the thing that most Christians missed, let me show you the latest interview he did addressing this controversy more at length. And so I said, hey, guys, I can have an opinion over here, but when I come into the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the final authority. Yes. What the word of God says, I said he decided male and female. That means our opinion about it does not matter. Mm -hmm. And if that means that we are confused for a second, God can deal with your confusion. That's right. if, if that means that you're struggling to figure out your identity, God can deal with that. This is what I fear, Joni, is it hasn't hit a lot of Christians' actual community, people they love. Yeah. So they don't care about it. Mm. I have a special needs son. When special needs hit my house, right. there's a yeah. different level of right. care about yes, it than if you don't have to deal with that. Mm. And so the way I approach it is in love. I'm, they're in the audience. They're looking at me as I'm preaching this. Like there are people right there that are full blown in another alternate lifestyle. And I'm saying, hey, I wish it could be different. I wish people would have A, B, C, and D options, but it doesn't matter. Right. This is what the Word of God says. Yeah. So we're going to help you. Trans is in the name Transformation Church. You're welcome here. We say it. All people are welcome, mm -hmm. but we don't actually mean, mean it. it. And I was being cheeky. I was being using my charisma and different things like that. Somebody took that clip, didn't listen to any of the other things that we said about it's what God's Word is the final authority. Yeah. Now, in what way do his passing comments on the LGBTQ plus inclusion demonstrate so much more than any sermon could have ever done? Well, let me illustrate this point by riffing on a story found in Peter Rollins' book called Insurrection. Little Kevin was always a good student, but lately his teachers started complaining about his violent behavior in class. So the school recommended his parents to take him to see a therapist. And so Kevin started visiting his therapist regularly. In one of the sessions, his therapy asked little Kevin, do you love your father? Kevin replied, yes. Then the therapist thought of something. She asked him what his teddy bear thought of his dad. Kevin's response did not surprise her. He told her that the bear does not like his father at all, but is deeply afraid of him. His teddy bear was able to say what Kevin couldn't. In this way, says Peter Rollins, the child is able to maintain a positive belief in his love for his father, while through the belief of the teddy expressing his fears. The therapist thus needs to spend time talking to the bear in order to make progress. Now, why is this story relevant to Michael Todd, his theology and his beliefs? Well, I think Michael Todd is the kid and the Bible is the teddy bear. Like the kid in the story, Michael Todd was able to maintain a positive belief in his love and acceptance for trans and gay people with phrases like, If I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? And I wish that there was an option 
of other in the kingdom. I wish God would have made it so much simpler. I don't know why he decided to do it like this. But through the Bible, his proverbial teddy bear, he was able to share his deeper beliefs in what he really feels about the subject and ask trans and gay people to submit their practices and belief to his understanding of what the Bible says about the topic. Michael Todd was never going to outright disapprove of or condemn trans and gay people. He still needs to believe of himself as a person who fully loves them and welcomes them in his church. The Bible was the tool that was there to do the ugly business he couldn't do for himself. In this scenario, Michael Todd could still be or at least think of himself as the good cop and let the Bible be the bad cop. This is why I say that Michael Todd was always on their side. He is indeed a conservative evangelical Christian through and through. God and the Bible, our proverbial teddy bears, give us insight into what we believe or what we need to believe about many subjects. You know, about women in leadership, our spouses, LGBTQ+. It is true that all of these topics have a biblical interpretation component to them. You know, what does the Bible say about these things? But this is seldom at the heart of the issue. The therapist thus needs to spend time talking to the bear in order to make progress. You know, Sometimes asking questions about what we believe God and the Bible say about X or Y Z topic is like asking questions to the teddy bear. Know what I mean? Like, for example, our ideas of post-mortem justice. You know, what will happen when we die? What you believe will happen to believers or non-believers when they die actually tell me more about what you think is just than about God's ultimate concept of justice. Our biblical interpretations of divine and ultimate justice when we die are most definitely skewed by what we would like them to be at the end. And that happens all across the board, however you want to call yourself. Liberal, conservative, red, blue, green. This is a human thing. Knowing this, we should be filled with humility, overflowing with humility whenever we speak of God and whenever we interpret the Bible. I heard that N.T. Wright, one of the most famous Old Testament scholars alive, used to say this phrase every time he would finish a sermon. 20% of what I just preached is probably wrong. The problem is that I don't know which 20% of my sermon that is. I think that is a good motto. To follow. So if you like this video and appreciate this type of content, click the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And before you leave, YouTube really thinks that you love this video right over here. So go ahead and click it. See you over there.